everyone, Kyle Erickson here. I bought the iPad Air M1 on launch, having upgraded from the previous generation with the A14 that was released two years previous to the M1 version. Now, the design of both of those models is identical. When you're talking about what makes this iteration different, it's all about what's packed inside. And up until a few weeks ago, I'd say that there were only a few things that really made the M1 version stick out over the A14 model but now that has all changed. I did an initial review when this came out and most of my thoughts surrounding how I used the iPad and what I liked about it were relatively the same up until I installed the beta version of iPadOS 16. You have a big boost in performance over the last gen, which makes more power hungry apps run smoother. Uh, for me, that's gonna be creative apps like Lightroom, Affinity Photo, and Procreate. Uh, games are much smoother as well, and with that increased performance comes a lot better battery life with those resource heavy apps. You've got a great display, improved webcam, double the transfer speed on the USB-C port, uh, there's just a lot of great things packed into this small form factor, and for me, it really has been the perfect little travel companion. It's lighter and more compact than bringing a MacBook with you, and if you get yourself an Apple Pencil and a keyboard with a trackpad or a case-keyboard combo like I have here, you really expand the versatility of this machine, but it's always felt like something was missing there. My initial reaction to this iPad was, what are we going to do with an M1 in an 11-inch iPad? It's cool that things run faster, but when am I actually going to be able to do more with this machine? There's been a lot of rumors and chatter about Final Cut Pro or Xcode coming to iPad, and although those still aren't available, we've seen bits and pieces of this trickle through with things like improvements to Swift Playgrounds where you can actually build software. And you do have apps like LumaFusion, which is a full-blown video editor, not to mention all those creative apps that I mentioned earlier. Reading the tea leaves there, I did buy this machine a lot on potential. Uh, there has to be more coming, right? Uh, well, I've been playing around with the beta version of iPadOS 16, and it's definitely looking that way. Probably the biggest thing to make its way into iPadOS 16 is Stage Manager. But for those of you who don't know, Stage Manager is a new windowing system made for multitasking that's supposed to provide a focused, clean workflow, not only on iPad, but it exists on macOS as well. What it allows you to do is group apps on your screen and along the left hand side of the screen you have this tiled view where you can switch between your apps or sets of apps. Now, this is a pretty cool feature in itself, but on the iPad alone, it can tend to feel a little bit cluttered, but the greatest thing about Stage Manager is I can finally use a monitor properly with my iPad. I'm sure anyone else who has previously plugged in an iPad has noticed it will technically show up on an external display, but it ends up mirroring the display and it just feels kind of useless in a sense. You usually have black bars on each side of the screen and you have this giant scale text. With Stage Manager, I get full use of my external monitor. Full width with an extended display, not mirrored. And something I think is really cool is I can bring certain apps onto my external screen, resize them, put them side by side, which is something that you could never do before. A lot of people have been screaming for these desktop-like features, so the question is, why did it take so long to get this into our hands? Well, the answer is power, and that's when it starts to make sense as to why they would put an M1 into a machine like this. Apple says the experience on iPad is intended to have instantaneous response, so when you click something, you expect it to have instant feedback, and when you start dealing with external hardware like 4K, 5K, or even 6K displays, which, by the way, this M1 Air supports all of those, that can become a problem. You have to start thinking about supporting an experience on two screens and there's just a lot of performance issues that you have to tackle there. That's why if you want to run Stage Manager, you will need to have an M1 chip, so no A-series chips there, none of those are going to work with this. And that's not only because of the performance gains with the M1, 60% uh, faster CPU, double the RAM from 4 gigs to 8, and two times more performant GPU than on the A14 chip but the M1 will also give you full virtual memory swapping support, so in general, it's just a lot better performance. Even little things like that USB-C port going from five to 10 gigabits per second, the higher transfer speed there means that you can properly support these high res displays. There is also one other requirement. You'll need a keyboard and a mouse for Stage Manager to be enabled and for it to actually be useful. 
So whether that's the Magic Keyboard or this Logitech Combo Touch, which I will leave a link for down below if you're looking for one of these bad boys. But other than that, it should meet all the requirements to get this up and running and it should work. I say the term should work somewhat loosely because this is still in beta, so it is a little bit buggy at the moment, but I'm sure it will improve. I remember going through the same thing with Universal Control, which by the way does also work with Stage Manager as well for those wondering, which does give you a ton of flexibility with how you're able to use this. With my iPad now, I can split screen out browsers and notes. I can work on creative apps with my Apple Pencil on one screen and bring them onto a larger one, so I don't have to work off the same small display for everything if I don't want to. Uh, not only that, but a bunch of other features have made a push towards a true desktop experience. A large part of that being the Files app and the introduction of desktop class apps, which also emphasizes desktop functionality on the iPad. So there are some things there like consistent undo and redo, uh, better find and replace across apps, and specific to that Files app, there's a bunch of great things there. You can now view folder sizes, there's a lot better sorting at the top of the window, and you can now get info on files and folders when you long press the icon. And my favorite, you can now click and drag to select multiple files, which you couldn't do before. I know that all might seem somewhat trivial, but I'm sure a lot of people have been frustrated when you're using this to work on specific files or access folders and saved files, whether that be for creative stuff or office docs or whatever it is. Uh, the way that the Files app and the iPad has traditionally handled files has always felt a little bit clunky. Again, all this stuff is in beta, and although we usually see most new beta features announced at WWDC make their way into the initial production release, I think for things like Stage Manager, we can probably expect a bit of a delay similar to what we saw with Universal Control, and I would expect to see a working version of the desktop class app features a bit sooner, but in any case, this is a great first step in expanding the functionality of the iPad. This little guy right here is probably the most versatile piece of tech that I own now. I can use it similarly to how I use a phone. I can do tablet specific tasks on here like edit photos or draw with the Apple Pencil. I can use it as a secondary display with universal control or sidecar, and now you're starting to be able to use it to replace some aspects of a desktop experience as well. Uh, drawbacks to this M1 iPad Air specifically, the storage options, there's a 64 gigabyte option that's kind of ridiculous. I guess it's okay if you're watching YouTube or something, but I'd probably say that if that's all you do with your iPad, the regular iPad is probably more of what you're looking for. Uh, the 256 gig option is what I would go with in most cases, and I do wish that they would have a higher storage option there as well. But that is really my only complaint over the past five months with this machine. Uh, I am really looking forward to see these features cleaned up and in production, and I would love to know what is your favorite thing about the iPad and what are you most excited about with iPadOS 16? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, click that like button. If you want to see more tech related content, or if you think that we may share the same taste in leather bound books and rich mahogany, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.